my channel it's also what I do for a living and I am Tiger Lily that's what my name is in the glass world I don't think I shared that with you all yet but that's who you can refer to me now um, I guess anyway ventilation is up and in and I've been working for about the last week and a half it's been awesome so this is a little compilation of our DIY ventilation system um, little disclaimer do not try this at home unless you have some sort of licensed professional um, luckily my boyfriend Keith is a licensed contractor so that helps greatly that's really just a CYA or CMA in this case <laughs> so um, Hopefully this helps give you an idea of what you're going to need when you're setting up your, your own system, your own shop. It's really important. It's like one of the number one things that you should have a decent ventilation system when you're blowing glass because of all the heavy metals and that may be released when while heating up the glass. The small particulate, the, the small dust, the glass dust, any, uh, all of these things are really unhealthy for you to be breathing in. Um, so make sure that you have something that is going to keep you safe, going to keep you going. This is something that you want to be doing for a while, I hope. So let me just show you a little, give you a, a short little shot of our system here that we put together. That's the hood from the temporary shop uh, you saw in the first video. We added some ducting and then in here is a, an, an, it's an old house furnace blower, which apparently you can find pretty easily. Uh, they throw them out all the time, so, from what I'm told. And so if you know anybody who's in the HVAC business or you know anybody that's, that's getting rid of one, scoop it up. Um, you can, you don't need any of the heating elements in it. Um, we just, we disconnected all of that and just used the blower itself. So that's all up in that box and you'll see that in the video here. And it's all wired in and I actually put this plug in today. So we turn it on and there's our vent sucking out all the air from the hood there so uh, it's not super loud it's actually a lot quieter than the last hood uh, I'm sorry the last fan that I had so let's cut that off so you can listen to my mousy voice there it is now you can hear my mousy voice okay um, so this is just a quick little video by request hopefully this helps you in your pursuit again um, just be careful Make sure you do your research. I'm actually going to link uh, a couple of websites down below that we referenced because you want to make sure that you have enough, um, the correct CFM so, like for suck, sucking the air out based on the size of your hood, the size of your shop, however you're doing it. So um, that is a lot of really good, helpful information and I will link that down below. And thanks to those who put that out there for free. It's really appreciative. Also a little side note, when you're doing this, make sure that you have all of your electricity separate from wherever you're putting your oxygen. It's really important. With something as big as the vent up here, you can see it again. Something as big as this blower up here, you want to um, make sure it's as far away from your oxygen as possible along with outlets and switches and all that there's always a potential for a spark and you don't want that anywhere near just in case you have a leak or something you don't know so be safe don't set yourself on fire don't blow up your shop <laughs> that's no good so um, without further ado here's the video okay here we have the old furnace blower 
still in its original box. Um, we did end up redoing that, taking it out of the box and reshaping the box for our purposes. But um, here Keith is just taking off all the excess wiring, unhooking all those little heaters. You see those little circular things there, are the heaters that hooked up to the heating elements. So they don't need to be hooked up because we don't need to produce any heat. We just need to produce some airflow. So breaking it down to the uh, hot neutral and ground. Uh, here he hooked it up to this breaker that's still on there. I think it's a 60 amp. Um, just We kept it on the breaker at this point just to test it out make sure everything was running smoothly and correctly and airflow and all that good stuff. But we did end up taking the breaker off altogether and hard wiring it into the circuit breaker box in the shop. Two, uh, two separate breakers there. Okay, on to the hood and ducting. The vent hood was the same one as you can see pictured here that we built for the uh, temporary shop. And you can see Keith is just scoring the top of it. Uh, that was the previous hole that we had. And now we have to make something a little larger to satisfy the uh, airflow for this new system. So uh, he's just cutting out a larger hole which actually we ended up having to cut out an even larger one to satisfy what we were using that was all from reference from those uh, websites I told you about earlier so um, definitely check those out if you're doing this yourself uh, here he's just using a little hand bender to bend up a few flaps so that they can attach to the ducting that will sit on top of it. So nothing too fancy. Um, real simple stuff. You know, we don't have any huge metal benders or anything like that, but with, you know, a few uh, handy tools, you can, you can make it happen. So here he's just measuring it up and getting ready to cut the hole in the ducting so that it uh, lines up with the hood. And you can find this kind of stuff anywhere that, you know, you find HVAC uh, equipment and whatnot. So he's just lining it up. He's getting ready to punch a hole. Now, I don't think I have all, yeah, I don't have all the, <laughs> the entire video of this, our, our camera, uh, crapped out as far as uh, battery or the SD card got full. So, but basically he's just doing the same thing he did on the hood, putting a hole and getting it ready to attach to the hood. And next we mounted it, which was super fun. It was super awkward and heavy. And uh, as you can see, it teeter-totters a little bit here. But um, we finally did get it attached to the wall there. We had to put in a few extra 2x4s along the back wall to, uh, as places to screw into. And so as it's set in, Keith measured and put up a shelf because the blower is pretty heavy and we don't want to just screw it into the wall. So he built this shelf that it would sit upon. And right now that's what he's doing. It's just, uh, you know, just something that is stable, tied in, that will be able to support the weight of the blower. And Keith just used some scraps of 2x4 and OSB that we had from the shop build uh, to build the shelf. Doesn't need to be anything fancy, just functional and you know, why not use it if we've got it, so. And there she is in all of her glory. As you can see, we uh, rebuilt a box around it. It's nothing fancy, but it works. It contains the blower and, uh, you know, it needs to be functional. Uh, here's just a little demonstration that I did. Again, we ended up making this hole a little bit bigger than this to again satisfy this the airflow but a little demonstration with the paper towel you can see it is sucking 
very well. And here is the out. It's just a hole in the back of the shop with a little flap to keep the rain and birds and bugs out. All in all, really happy with how all this turned out. Um, this right here is just a, another little view of what we started out with with this blower motor. So just as a reference to all y'all out there who are thinking about maybe doing something similar. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it clears up any questions that you may have had. Please feel free to share your comments, questions, all of that down below. And um, yeah, look out for the next video. I've got another one in the works right now. And um, like, subscribe, share, go follow me on Instagram, I don't know, um, <laughs> especially if you're another glass blower, follow me, I'll definitely follow you back, I am all about supporting uh, each other in the community, so uh, check out the Patreon, right now it's a dollar a month to subscribe, become a patron, um, it really helps, it helps me, keep me doing these videos, um, it's a little extra income, you know, trying to get back on my feet, trying to get the shops, shop finished. I will be adding different tiers uh, soon. I'm collecting a bunch of footage, little side projects and stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm doing. And um, so that'll be added into different tiers in the Patreon. But um, I know times are tough right now, but it's really appreciated. It's a dollar a month, you know, whatever. That's my pitch. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Be good. Do good. And remember, don't be a douchebag. Love you. Bye. And a very special thanks to my one, my first, my only patron, Cole Cameron. You rock, buddy. Keep it real.